Hello. I thought I'd make a video in response to Archaic's latest video on the seven seals for seven kings. Now what I'd like to say here is no criticism of what Jason is showing. Rather this is actually complementary in that what Jason talks about in the video is this Phoenix event and walking through it with no fear. So, as I've said on previous videos, there is a micro and a macro. We're in the realm of Maya. And there's always an, an esoteric and an exoteric, an internal and an external that's being expressed. So, first off, let's just start with a symbol. It's a symbol for Earth. It's a circle with a cross. Now, as I've said on a, a video a long, long time ago, we have a look at that. Now, you tell me where the four corners of the earth are. They're right in the middle. I've also expressed this as when you are just in a state uh, of being and you find yourself, as the way I've described it, as you've got a storm and you shut the door and suddenly all that noise, that chaos, that external world goes silent and you sit in the middle of the eye of the storm or the eye of the, the middle of the lighthouse as it were. So this symbol also, the whole point of everything is you. You are right there. This is your aura, your informed field. It's also the O of organic. And you can see, especially when we express it as a tilt of the earth, earth you have been crossed, <laughs> double crossed, if you think about it. It's expressed on the Union flag as well. And that sits, if you look on the map, the United Kingdom, which the Union flag applies to. The United Kingdom sits geographically under the Pharaohs. But there are patterns with things. And most of it is almost mocking from the material world. <coughs> the basic premise I would go with, consider, listen to that entire video that Jason has presented. Now, I don't care whether you like him, agree with him, whatever. That's irrelevant. Doesn't matter. If also, there's a lot, there's a few channels, dissenters and things. Does it really matter about any of that? And just move past that. On the subject of the Bible and the subject of Christ, does it not say about forgiveness? So it doesn't matter. I've heard some of the accusations. I make no judgment, I don't know. I wasn't there. It would just be gossip and hearsay. I'm not interested. Anyway, I have digressed already. Um, so, I go with the premise, as shown by Neville Goddard. You have a thing called the Bible. Just by its very name, it implies too. As Jason says, it is a book of good and it is a book of evil. We're in, a, we're in a realm of mirrors and illusions anyway. So as well as showing an external, it is showing an internal. Now as Neville Goddard puts it, there is only one. There is only one character playing all the parts. You can call it God. Think of it in 
childlike wonder terms. You've created it and now you wish to experience what you have created. Effectively, what you have with the Bible is a mini library. It is, consists of 66 books. Now, taken as an internal, an esoteric message, you do none the worse for listening to the way Neville Goddard explains it, where it all makes sense. Now, there is only one, and that is the whole point again. There is only one. And that is you, you and I. Now, Another way, if we use a modern day terminology, think of it like the Mario Brothers computer game. You are in control of a character called Mario. Now, like most computer games, you have a time limit in which to achieve a level. You have linear time in this realm. Now, when you get to the level end of level one it's entirely up to you whether you want to admire that castle after you've jumped up the flag uh, flagpole and pulled the flag down and to enable you to get through onto level two or you can sit and compl contemplate the castle and you can discuss whether the thing was built before the background scene <laughs> or, or anything else in the background scene or the Ripline chimneys. The intention of this is to help you get through these coming years. Now, there's a three-step process that is required for this. You have to do some work. <laughs> it doesn't actually require a lot of work. But it's entirely down to you how much work you put into it and whether you even want to go with this. It requires having an open mind, open to all possibilities. Then it, then it takes the next step of realising the conceptuality of it, understanding the concept of how the mechanism works. Then it takes that leap of faith, that leap into the unknown, where you ask yourself the question, how would it feel if, and then whatever you want to put behind that. This is what Neville Goddard teaches. You've got two distinct areas here. You've got the spiritual path, but you've also got, if you wish to attain things in the material world, you can still apply that and you can still have those things not about doing good deeds and all this Christianized thing. It's far deeper than that. So this, I'd like to go through, first of all, the, the whole thing about the language. I, it comes on late, I'll probably end up repeating some of this. So. Think of uh, this place that Jacob ascends the ladder. He goes to a place called Pineal. Now you can do a Google search and just put in Pineal gland and you'll get diagrams, images come up and it's like a very small circle and then it looks like an eye and you'll see it expressed in Egyptian. It's like that whole eye symbol with the it that sort of comes down. You'll notice that the pineal is a bit like these tear ducts. It is the entrance to the all-seeing eye. Right, so as Jason explains in this, and also as Neville Goddard explains, so you've got secondary source from two different aspects coming up this, Egypt refers to the material, the external world. 
Etymology time. Letters are basically glyphs. They are symbols that have a meaning. When they're strung together, they form sentences, spells, words. In the beginning was the words. These are expressed words as images. Right. So, as Neville Goddard says, there is only one. So we draw that. I know it seems a bit basic, but there's one. So, when you affix yourself to any belief, you actually form a crucifix. You nail, nail yourself to that cross, to that belief. The whole story in the Bible is about coming off of that cross of rising off of that body, that belief system. See, what you're trying to achieve, the whole purpose of this, within a time limit, is to reach your highest level, which would look like that, a T. So, you take a word like Egypt, you take the letter E for example, you've still got the I, and you've got three paths. The middle path is the shortest one. E denotes energy. The next part is an old English word Jip. When you jip something or to jip, it's theft. So when you string these things together, so if you look at jip, for example, G for Gaia, which represents Earth. Why? It's what you're doing. You're asking why, and P. You're wanting to. You're wanting to see the whole thing, but. It's a theft. You're not going to see the whole thing from an earthly perspective. So the energy is stolen from your highest level. That's Egypt. And it's Egypt in the concept of, in this external world, one moment, If you look at the external world, it's all trying to rob you of your time. You need to look at external things, keeping you distracted, keeping you busy, keeping you chasing after material things. So it's a theft of your true wealth, which is your time allotted to have the experience here. So within Egypt, and it's in the Old Testament, you've no doubt heard of Sodom and Gomorrah, the two cities that are destroyed. In the broadest sense, Sodom means abuse. Now this is talking about the esoteric, so we're talking about everything going on inside us, not the Egypt, the external world. We're talking about the is real light. We're asking ourselves, is, is there real light inside us? Have we activated it? Has it been activated? So Sodom basically means abuse. And in its backwards form, it's rather like a Latin word, as in modus operandi. Sodom backwards is basically modos. Modos. So it's a mechanism. Now the Gomorrah, it depends how you break that word down, how you break those glyphs down. Now go Mora. So you're saying goodbye to tomorrow because you're 
having your time stolen by the Egypt, the external world. Go back to another illustration here. Now, it's all about flow. That is facts, logic, and organic wisdom, which spells flow. So if we look at an organic flow, symbolized, this is flower, very crude drawing. You have the roots, there's the seed, and it's rooted. Now that seed has had to go, had to fall, it's had to go below and into the darkness, into the soil. Now if that soil is fertile, it will grow. Then you've got the parting, that's the represented by the Grim Reaper. As Neville Goddard explains it, it's when you're split down the middle. It's expressed as Jesus breaking the bread, the, the opening of the, the shell of the seed. And of course, this is like the Kundalini rising. It shoots up and it becomes a flowering. It blossoms, it blooms. I think you get the idea. Um, So, when it talks in the Bible, look. now, the truest thing you're going to find about the Bible, bearing in mind that it is such a mixture of historic events, of the esoteric being externalised, in other words, turning the world inside out, the embodiment in these physical bodies, the, the great play that is being played out, that is going on inside, is being reflected in these, this story. But the truest part about the whole thing, it open any, any Bible, and just look inside, it will probably say King James Version, New International Version, or, or whatever. And that's the true part. They are all versions of the truth that is continuously being edited, changed, updated, obscuring its esoteric message. And also the ex exoteric message to it is very obscured as well. So, if we take that flower analogy, You've got, now this is your seven seals on the internal. Now your solar plexus, your place of the sun, it's also the sun, well, the, the two lights, one by the, for the day and one for the night, which, or you could express it as sun and moon. It has to fall, there's the fall of man, that's at the seed from the gut feeling. The solar plexus has to fall to the root, just like the flower. Now it has to begin its ascent all the way up into the heavens. We'll come back to this symbol. So in the esoteric sense, like taking Genesis for example, when it talks about Earth, these human avatars are also earth they are the soil for that christ seed that is planted your gut feeling that is guiding you if you listen to it of course um so it's also expressed as clay because clay can be molded it can be formed into shapes so man was created an image it's like it's like a clay it's talking about the physical body it's also the soil you could also think of the sun and the moon being like the scales the kidneys rudolf steiner talks about in earlier evolution of man how there was a direct access of communication with the kidneys which is now lost in 
humanity's evolution and now the only communication is through the lungs, through the breathing exercises which commu can communicate with these physical avatars. It is the one thing you can take control of with the conscious mind and you can regulate your breathing. I'm digressing a little bit but it does all tie in. The simplest explanation is by Neville Goddard in that God is Christ. God as man is Christ. The problem is in this realm of Egypt, when you look in the mirror, you don't see God, you see these avatars. And the external world will try and convince you that the lower eye consciousness is you, your, your beliefs and your opinions. You are that cross, basically. When clearly you, you are not. So now to get on to... Uh, Jason's video, the seven seals, the seven kings. Now, bearing in mind, I'm talking about the internal going on. Now, he mentions, I'll give you the sort of timestamps to his video. So, uh, seven minutes, 36 seconds in, he's talking about Ezra, I think it's second Ezra, 1619. Now the mirror of this realm is reflected so in the media horoscopes and narratives because we are in a media evil age. You've got all these things allegedly going on in the world. Just gossip and hearsay. I mean, news is just basically classed as entertainment. It's just another distraction in this realm called Egypt. But there is beauty in that. While that narrative is running, what it says in Ezra about when uh, it says, it's referenced also, I come like a thief in the night when least expected. So when things appear to be good in the external, that's when you can be thrown a real curveball. And if you think about, if you've been through the experience of depression or anxiety, panic attacks, night sweats, ringing in the ears, and all the various other phenomenons. That's the first sign that you're not even aware of. Um, we'll, get, we'll get on to this, because this really does come into this. So, the seven seals represent the seven chakras. This is dreadful light for me to try and read this in, but... Uh, yeah, so they're sealed, so the message cannot be read. This is why when you come into these physical bodies, you come into this realm, previous life memories are white and it, you've got to start again. It's a, you go through a reset. <coughs> and the seven is, uh, where have we got to? So Jason's now got to 40 minutes, 51 seconds in the video. He's talking about uh, Seven denotes completion of a cycle. Well, that's your seven chakras. Your, it's the Kundalini rising that's going on inside you. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's the seals, their messages for kings, because this is referenced in Psalm 82 about... You are princes, but you would die as men. It's referring to the physical avatar. You all go through the experience of, of death as a human. But you are God, even if you don't realise it. Another way to explain this. It is like a computer code. Now, you may have heard the expression, talk to God, God is always listening. And you've heard about the expression being... God being all-seeing and all-knowing, well, it's connected to the pineal gland, so there's nothing that can be hidden. The only thing is, is opening up that barrier that our lower conscious ego mind is not allowing us to find. 
because it's going to lose control. Because you're giving yourself, you're surrendering to yourself and you're moving into your higher conscious being. You're going through your own Kundalini rising, your ascension. So the Revelation 6, we're now on to 19 minutes into Jason's video. Revelation 6. Um, the first seal is broken, and I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown that was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, this is an internal, I'm not going to stress this enough, but this is an internal. Notice it says a bow, it doesn't mention an arrow, a bow and a crown. Because when that seed has gone through those early experiences that can come out as all those things I listed earlier, like the anxiety, the panic attacks, that realisation is like a static because there's a conflict going on internally. You've got a war of nations going on. This is, comes out in these, these seven seals as well. That's like the first signs being given. The seals are starting to break. The whole idea of that bow is to, is to fire that crown so it goes to the seventh chakra, that Kundalini rising. Oh, right. Yeah, so moving on with what Jason shows. So the, with a with an archer, it's fired from a place of concealment. It's hidden. Well, no one can see you're going through a Kundalini rising. It's just it's that secret known only to one. It is through the experience of going through it. So only you will know it. There is no archer to be seen. It's not like in this Maya external world where, no, the uh, it's honourable to be fighting with a sword, close combat. No, it's, it's not about that type of combat. It's an overcoming of the lower consciousness within oneself. So it's quite right that he didn't earn it. The he that gets on that horse, that's, that's you, that's referring to you inside yourself. Now depending on what resistance you put up to yourself, when you are denying that you are God, you are the creator in a personalised form, you are the one that is putting a limitation. You are not allowing that crown to be fired all the way up. Nothing to do with the external world from this end. This is the core work. This is, now, I'm going to say, go to Julia's channel, Simplicity Revealed. Oh dear Lord, we're up to uh, 28 minutes, I apologise. I'm going to, uh, yeah, go to Julia's channel, Simplicity Revealed, and look at her playlists on Michael Harrell's Language Lessons of the Heart. The inner core work, that is paramount. That is what is going to get you through this. So I'll carry on this on a, a part two, because now we're up to 29 minutes, and... There's rather a lot to go through. Thank you very much.